Welcome to Outfitter Interviews with Safari Club International's Golden Gate Chapter. Today, we are privileged to have Kai Kuhl of k, &K Premium Yag. Welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself and tell us about your services. Yeah, my name is Kai Kuhl. I'm the owner and general manager of k, &K Premium Yag. We are located in Dortmund in Germany. And at the moment, we have here the biggest European show for hunters. Uh, it's called Jagd und Hund, uh, or it translates hunt and uh, dogs. And uh, it's the fourth day we have here. Yeah, in KNK Premium Jagd, we have own outfits um, in Germany, in Austria, and in France. But we are also uh, an agency uh, and offering hunting trips in 40 countries around the globe. And uh, we can offer 140 uh, destinations. Wow, that's quite a few uh, destinations there. Uh, so that's that all of Europe for, or no, no, even no, beyond? No. You, you can, okay, our uh, history uh, or our core competence, of course, is um, Europe. Let's say the countries like Germany, Austria, uh, France, and uh, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, uh, uh, Romania and Bulgaria, and uh, on the other, as well, Spain, if you talk about the, 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 the Grand Slam, the four Ibex species and the barber sheep. And if you talk about small hunts, uh, bird hunts, uh, red leg partridges and grouse, etc., you can also book with us uh, in Scotland, England, uh, and we are in Scandinavian. But I say always from A, like Alaska to Z, like Zambia, we have many opportunities to offer you a fantastic hunt with well-known partners. Yeah? And um, a few of them are here and partners of uh, k, k Premium Yacht. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a huge network, yeah? having the best the ages uh, uh, on our booth and uh, so that we can bring clients together to see who is my PH, who is the company k, &K is working with, and of course, our own stuff from the different uh, estates we have uh, under our responsibility uh, are also here. Okay, so you've mentioned a couple of the species that you hunt. Um, it, could you just, wh which are the species that uh, are most prominent in your organization? Uh, if you uh, focus on, 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 on Germany or Austria uh, or Central Europe, uh, you can say, First is the red stack, then the fellow stack, the roe deers, the chamois. We are offering alpine ibexes. We are offering uh, mouflon rams and mouflon sheep as well as seeker. And uh, so all hoofed species living here in, in, in Europe, we can offer uh, uh, in different countries, uh, in different kinds of hunts. It might be a spot and stalk hunt. It can be... Uh, a, a driven hunt uh, and uh, Germany, let's say, as an example, is the country on uh, uh, the country on Earth with the highest quota of harvested hoof species. We harvest per year 2.2 million hoof species, uh, 1.2 million roe deers, 800,000 wild boars, 100,000 red deers, uh, 100,000 fellow deers, chamois, etc. So no country on earth has so, uh, such a high quota to harvest uh, hoofed animals like Germany. It's, uh, we are a small country with big cities, highways, etc. But we have the highest game population on a square mile or kilometer. Wow, that sounds really impressive. What is. Is the, what is the best time of year to hunt? I, I suppose it changes with the different species. Yeah, we have in comparison with other countries, uh, the longest uh, hunting period. We start, if you consider the roebuck, 1st of May. In some states of our country, we start 1st of April. And, and then we hunt latest until end of January. And, um, and uh, the wild boars, because we have a huge population here in Germany and, and the risk of the African Swine fever, which is really increasing coming from Poland and the Eastern European countries and is approaching Germany. We hunt the wild boars 
over the whole over the whole year, but we are considering that we shoot first the piglets and then the mother sow. Yeah, uh, not the sow and, and then the piglets have no uh, guidance. No, no, it's a fair chase, but we hunt the white boars 12 months a year. So your pig hunts are, um, are, or maybe all of your hunts, are they fair chase or are they estate uh, hunts or some of no, both? The, you know, they, they are absolutely fair chase. Uh, uh, we hunt on uh, private estates, for example, uh, uh, let's say noble estates or royal estates. Uh, if you consider the UK or if we consider the royal estates here in Germany or the noble estates, we have stately owned areas. And don't forget, and that might surprise some American visitors, um, we have um, a military bases here in Germany um, for their own military, which is a little bit weak at the moment, but we have the support from the United States. And the two biggest uh, military bases outside of the United States are here in Germany, in Grafenwehr and Hohenfels. And all the rotations the American uh, forces are doing will be done here in Germany. And on these military areas, we have a huge population of red deers and red stags and wild boars. And although there is a, uh, let's say, seven days a week military activity, uh, we have a, a high population of red deers and wild boars there and we can, can offer their uh, fantastic hunts. Okay. Well, um, actually, I've been to Slovakia. I was on a military base there uh, for work. Yeah. And yes. I saw that they, they had um, uh, stands there also for, uh, for hunting. So I, I, I know that that does happen in, in Europe. So No, I'll, no, no. No, no, Steve. I, I, sorry that I interrupt. We have... We have uh, some private estates which have a fenced area or the area is fenced, depending like in France, that the agriculture around these uh, forests and private estates are suffering if the, if the white boar population would escape. Uh -huh. uh, the, the white boars, uh, they, they, it's, a, it's a huge damage when the white boar populations uh, can spread out and, and the person who is, has rented the hunting area has to pay the damage or the damage to the farmers. It costs millions. And in some areas in Europe, you have fenced areas like in Hungary or let's say in some parts of Czech or in, in France, for example, and uh, some small fenced areas in Germany. But most of our hunts, um, we, we uh, offer in free rooming areas. Okay, but even on these places that are fenced, it's a large enough area that it's still a fair chase hunt? Of course. Uh, the, 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 the game population is managed uh, proper. Uh, uh, the populations are not too high. So uh, the, the, that the nature always can recover. If you have too many white boards in a huge fenced area, they can damage the ground, etc. cetera. And, and the nature is suffering. No, no. Uh, we have annual quarters uh, we have to uh, fulfill to achieve, how we say, and uh, no, no, we do it in a, in a proper way. Okay. Uh, what is the method uh, for hunting? I mean, is there lots of walking? Um, is it by vehicle? Is, do the people go to a stand? You know, that sort of thing. What, yeah, uh, uh, we, the hunt is uh, so different here in Central Europe. It, it, might be totally different than the hunts in, 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 in America. Uh, it depends on the hunting, the, of, of the size of the hunting area. If you have, have big cities around, highways, etc., and you have a limited hunting area, you, you mostly hunt from a high seat. Sometimes when you have a pressure with the white horse, you have feeding places there. You feed them with corn and you wait that they... Uh, came out of the forest or of the fields, and then you try to harvest them. But uh, um, in Germany, most time the hunters spend on a high seat. But we have nice hunting areas, flat areas, for example, in the northern parts of Germany to the Baltic Sea, or uh, uh, yeah, to the Baltic Sea, where you can spot and stalk. And we spot and stalk in the Bavarian uh, Alps. So when we hunt on chamois, red deer, roebuck. Uh, in the Alps, we have to climb up the mountains as you do it in the Rocky Mountains. 
or the Cotton Mountains in BC, whatever. Uh, and, and then it's, it's, it's a spot and stalk. But in Germany, it's not allowed to shoot from a car. Yeah, that you drive over the countryside and when you see a robot or any other game species, it's not allowed to shoot them from a car. It's not fair chase. No, that makes perfect sense. Uh, what about uh, people with reduced mobility? There's a lot of you know, elderly people or people otherwise uh, have reduced mobility. Can you accommodate them also? Of course, we can accommodate them. And uh, we have hunting areas uh, where we can say if somebody is handicapped or is, how we say, a little bit overweight or old or is a smoker and, and has not the physical conditions. We have also in the Alps uh, opportunities to bring him up on top of the mountain and then he's hunting uh, from left to right on the ridge, but not top down and up and down. Uh, no, no, we, we have all opportunities uh, here to have people, uh, to, to make people happy or hunters happy, depending on their physical conditions. Uh, that's not a problem. Excellent. What are the accommodations like uh, for your hunts? I mean, you have many hunts in many different places, but what is, in general, what are the accommodations like? Yeah, uh, in general, we, we host our clients, depending on their wishes. If they like to live in a hunting lodge, can be in the forest or on top of the mountains, in the Alps or in the forests. Um, depending if they like to have a, a, a bedroom or suite, suite, or if they say it can be really, really um, simple. But on the other side, we have um, hotels, three, four, five star hotels with all opportunities of services, uh, recovering services, massage, etc., etc. So we can offer everything depending on what the clients want. Some clients from the United States, when they come back to the roots, many of them have their roots in Germany or in Central Europe. They like to have a nice hotel, they have their wives with or the family. And then we, we organize a family hunt with non-hunting companions so that the daddy can hunt and the family has a good time during the stay so we, we we can do let's say everything uh, we are flexible depending on the wishes of our clients okay very good uh what type of weapons do you um have people come there and hunt with i mean rifle pistol muzzle loader archery what yeah uh, uh, we have <laughs> not the same opportunities like you have in california or in, in North America, it's not allowed to, to hunt in Germany with an archery, with a muzzle loader, for example, and we don't shoot with a pistol. Uh, when we have a, a big game hunt or on, on Roblox or stacks or white boss or, or brown bear or whatever, um, we shoot with a rifle um, and um, or with a side by side or double a double rifle or over and under. And when we have here uh, the small game hunts on birds and on, on hare or, uh, or rabbits, for example, we, we, you can hunt with a, with a gunshot. Yeah? And um, uh, the most popular caliber here in Germany is uh, 308 Winchester, 50% of all sold uh, um, calibers in Germany is 30, uh, three, uh, 308. That's the most sold caliber. So for, for clients coming abroad, from abroad, uh, it's easy when they have uh, a 300 Winchester, 306, uh, 308, or 243. It's, um, it's possible to hunt with these standard calibers here in Germany. And yeah, and we have also rental rifles and, and shotguns available. Okay, that was actually going to be my next question. It's so difficult to travel with guns these days. I agree. Do you, yeah. you have guns available, both rifles and shotguns? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, I spent in the afternoon uh, uh, 30 minutes with my partners from Hornady and uh, Savage. Uh, so we have uh, American rifles we can offer so that our clients from America feel yeah, how we say in German, they feel well. They know how to, to handle this bolt rifle and, and they know the brand, for example. Um, and we also offer, uh, we are also partner of Krikov. 
speak of as well known in the United States with a K-80 or K-20 um, uh, shotgun, but also with a, a single rifle, uh, sempre or double rifles over and under. We cooperate with Merkel and, and, and other brands. Yeah? And uh, um, it depends on the wishes the client has. If he is really somebody who is familiar and, uh, with a bolt rifle, he gets a bolt rifle. If he loves uh, uh, over and under or side by side, um, then he gets this, and it's the same with the, with the shotguns. We take time on the shooting range uh, to see how does the stock fit, uh, and 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 how does he shoot uh, clay sh clays. Yeah, when we go on a clay shooting stand to see how does he succeed before he goes to a hunt. We always uh, go on the shooting range before we start on. Doesn't matter if with a rifle or with a shotgun to see how well is the client performing. And, and which rifle or a shotgun fits perfectly to him. And then we have test shootings. And when everything fits, uh, then we, we start next day, for example, the hunt. Okay, very good. And I presume that uh, you take care of all of the paperwork necessary for, uh, for helping people bring guns in if they want to bring guns in or uh, paperwork yeah. for hunting licenses and things like that. Yeah, um, you know, um, it, it, to hunt here in Germany is for foreigners po possible. But, you know, we are the country with a high standard of administration. And sometimes I have the impression that it's easier for me to book in Alaska a, a license and buy a, a tech uh, and, 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 and go out with my partners in Alaska for hunting moose or brown bear or whatever. Uh, but here in Germany, it's, it's, it's not a problem. When we get from, from our clients uh, from, from abroad, we, we, get, uh, we need a, a copy of the passport, of the local hunting license, a, a, a pass photo, how we say, a passport photo, and a copy of the liability insurance. When we have these four uh, things together, then we order a German hunting license, which he can use for 14 days. That's the average time uh, clients, for example, from the United States, or let's say we have clients from Korea or South Africa or wherever. It's, that's the time, they, they, in average um, the time frame, that they say we stay here for 14 days and then they can hunt with us 14 days in Germany. And we do these services. It's a full service. Excellent. Excellent. And so for people from my country, um, you have guides that speak English, I presume? You see, it was me. I do my best. <laughs> I hope that the audience can understand me. I have a typical, horrible German English. My pronunciation is a nightmare. But, you know, my experience is if we are in Romania or in Switzerland or in Hungary or in Sweden, uh, we all have our accents. But the hunters are a community which can communicate without language uh, language knowledges with hands and we it's easy for us as as, a, as hunters to have the, the 10 or 15 words available uh, to communicate but quite honestly uh, many of our partners speak english uh, they speak french they speak german they speak spanish and uh, uh, but English is the most spoken foreign language here in Germany, or also the, the younger guides in France or in, in, in Romania or in Hungary or in Czech or Slovakia, they, they all speak English. And if not, we will have um, a person in place which will translate between the local language and let's say English. So there's always a partner uh, or a, a, a dolmetscher, how we say, translator in place, uh, so that the communication uh, is possible. Well, I, and, I think... Uh, Steve, and Steve, oh, one ahead. thing. You know what? Uh, uh, my experience last week in Romania and two weeks ago in, in Spain was if somebody is not able to speak, we have the Google translator. You write in Spanish and you get the English wording on your, on your screen and back and forth. Then we can uh, have a quick uh, communication, uh, reading the sentences uh, Google is providing. That, so that means the new technology with the smartphones is easy to communicate, helps to communicate. 
Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, it's amazing what technology can do these days. Absolutely. So, so let, let's, let's hear a little bit more about yourself. How did you get into guiding? Well, I, I grew up uh, here in, 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 in the state, Lower Saxon. It's uh, uh, the, the second biggest uh, state of Germany. My, my dad has been a forest ranger with uh, uh, the responsibility of, uh, let's say, 10,000 hectares. And I grew up since I was born with, with hunt. And uh, I always had this passion and, uh, and uh, have all examinations uh, and, and, um, and uh, yeah. And I love this job, uh, although my heritage is another one. I work also for American companies uh, like Bayer US and General Electric located in Naylor Park, Ohio. I worked a few years for them. And I'm in this business uh, um, since uh, 17 years, since 2005. But in my free time, I always have hunted and now it's my professionality. And let's say we have 30, 40% of our clients uh, are from foreign countries, from Switzerland, Sweden, United States, uh, from Brazil, South Africa, and, and the Scandinavian countries. So we, we are very international. And uh, yeah, and, uh, it's fantastic for me uh, to have uh, hunters from other countries around the globe, uh, here in Germany or in France or in Austria or in other states. And opposite, when I'm in these countries, I, I always enjoy it also, although I'm a professional hunter, to get guided in Alaska or uh, uh, let's say British Columbia, uh, or in South Africa. So it's a big community and it's always uh, um, uh, back and forth my position. Sometimes I'm a client, sometimes I'm the guide. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the, the types of trophies um, that people can expect uh, on your hunts. Are they like just representative samples to, you know, world? world-class uh, trophies or some of both or what, what kind yeah. of trophies can people expect? You can get, let's say, talk about red stacks. You can get uh, uh, world record stacks here in, in, in France. We have an estate where we uh, can offer uh, world-class SCI stacks. Uh, we had clients from the United States when I always have a booth uh, in Dallas or in Denver. And uh, uh, we bring, for example, American clients from Dallas to, to Central Europe and we combine the hunts and they, they are looking for huge SCI stacks. They are, in, in France, they are comparable with the huge stacks, let's say, in New Zealand. But it's easier to travel and to, to come to Central Europe and to shoot it here uh, than might be opposite, depending where you live in the States. No. Regarding Robux, regarding Alpine Ibexes, regarding Fellow Stakes or Sika Stakes or Chamois, we have all opportunities to bring um, clients in front of a world-class trophy as well. If somebody only likes to have the experience and he says, I'm happy with a bronze medal, then he can shoot a bronze medal. So you get everything depending on the wishes of our clients. Okay. Well, what can the hunters do to give them the best chance of success? You know, what, what sort of preparation can they do? Yeah, I think for all of us traveling around the globe for hunting, the best thing is that you have a normal physical condition. Then you can enjoy a hunt. Nobody would go to hunt uh, on a, a door sheep or let's say mountain goat without be trained because he would suffer after two days, muscle pain, etc. It's the same here in, in, in Europe. When we hunt in the Alps, it would be helpful if the client has normal physical conditions. Depending on his physical conditions, we, we, we keep the, the speed up on top of the mountain or, or downhill. Uh, and the other thing is the shooting skills. I know Sometimes we shoot very quick. We have shooting sticks here. Uh, and uh, for example, when we have driven hunts, which are not so popular in the United States, uh, you need shooting skills. We have shooting cinemas here. 
where you shoot on a screen, you get trained that you know exactly which game species is approaching us. The movies, they show exactly the different game species, the classification, etc. No, physical conditions and shooting skills would be fine. If the client doesn't feel well, we spend uh, a few hours uh, on a shooting range or in a shooting cinema uh, so that he feels comfortable and has trust in his skills, uh, has trust in the rifle or shotgun. So we take the time and, uh, uh, and, and, and if a client books a hunt with us, we have enough time so that he can get trained. And um, yeah, and it's always help, helpful when you have some knowledge about the game species. You know, when we travel to Africa, we also read uh, uh, Belletristic, mostly from Craig Boddington, of course. Uh, what is approaching me or is disappearing? Uh, but uh, quite honestly, if you come to Europe and like to hunt the, the Central European game species, it might sense uh, to be to have a, a little bit knowledge about them. Uh, the details regarding the evaluation, uh, we will do it during the hunt. Yeah. And last but not least, communication is also helpful so that we can discuss with the client during the hunt the strategy, what we like to do, how we like to approach, what will we do the next hours, etc. That's it. Physical conditions on a normal level. Good shooting skills and communication. That's fine. And a preference for German beer. Okay, very good. So it sounds like you've got you know quite an operation there. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say to the audience uh, in closing? Yes, uh, we invite you, all the audience uh, um, here of the SCI, and 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 and, and um, come to Central Europe. If you have your heritage here in Central Europe, uh, come to Central Europe. It's a safe country. Although we have military activities uh, in the Ukraine, uh, but here all the neighborhood states are, are safe. Uh, uh, and, um, and, and, and you will you will find countries with a long, long hunting distance, uh, the, the, uh, tradition, tradition. Uh, we have our own blowers. We have excellent dogs. Uh, we have a special ceremonials when we place the tableau. So for many of our clients, especially from the United States, they love this uh, atmosphere. And, and, and k and has a huge, huge network. Um, and, and, and Craig Bodick and his team know that, for example, you, you will have um, here good hunts, you will meet good people um, and you will have a fantastic time with us here in Central Europe. Well, it's been a great pleasure uh, having you on Outfitter Interviews and uh, Weidmann's Heil. Weidmann's Dank. <laughs> <laughs>